chapter 19, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. And when we come to Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, come with me, please, down to verse number 28. Luke's Gospel 19, and we're commencing to read from verse number 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before, that's the Lord Jesus, ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a, a colt tied, whereon yet never man set. Loose him, and bring him thither. And if any man ask you, Why do ye loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. They that were sent went their way and found, even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said unto them, Why loose ye the colt? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon, and as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some, of the, and some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to that reading from his own precious truth this morning. It's sad how things that are inadequate are not important in the eyes of the world. Things that are what seem inadequate are not important in the eyes of the world. When today's people or the world's people look at things that seem inadequate, to the people of the world they just seem so important, so unimportant. But you know, child of God this morning, the God, that God uses, God himself uses, and has done many insignificant, he has used many insignificant things. God has used many insignificant means and methods to fulfill his divine purpose on this planet earth. What is not important to man? What is insignificant to man? Listen, it's important to God. Things that are too little are never too little in the hands of the Lord. Do you remember in John's Gospel, chapter 6, you remember a great multitude had gathered. And you remember they were hungering and they were fainting by the way. 
And the Lord Jesus told his disciples to go and buy bread. And the disciple says, 200 penny worth of bread will not suffice to feed this multitude. And you remember in John 6, I think it's verse 39, Andrew comes along and says, Ah, but there's a lad here. There's a lad. There's a lad who has five barley loaves and two fish. And then Andrew had to say that it's John 6 and verse 9, that's where it is. And Andrew said, But what are they among so many? So insignificant. Little thing like that can't be used. But here's the message the Lord wants you and I to really get a grasp of this morning. What seems too little in the world's eyes is more than enough when it's placed into the Lord's hands. There's nothing insignificant. There's nothing unimportant if it's placed into the Lord's hands. You remember in 2 Kings, sorry, 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter, chapter 17 it is. You remember Elijah was sent to Zarephath where there was a widow woman. Husband was dead. And you remember the Lord said, uh, said to Elijah, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And when Elijah got there, all she had was a wee handful of meal and a little oil. You know something, child of God, she hadn't enough hardly for herself. It's all she had. But you know something this morning? It was more than enough when it was placed into the Lord's hand. Let me say something this morning, child of God. There's absolutely nothing insignificant when it's placed into the Lord's hands. Nothing is useless when it's given to the Lord. Maybe you feel insignificant this morning. Maybe you don't feel important. No, no, I would be insignificant to be used of the Lord because I didn't get the grades perhaps that I should have got at school. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You take a good look at this pulpit. Take you a good look at this pulpit and take a good look at me this morning. I remember after my fourth year in, in Honor Clay High School, Mr. Holmes, who was our, my form teacher, during the summer holidays, he met up with me, and I got this wee tap on the shoulder. And he looked down, and he says, George, what did your parents think of the school report? I says, Mr. Holmes, they didn't see the school report. And why did they not see the school report? It went into the back of the fire, Mr. Holmes. And he looks down at me and he says, Now, George, I hope you're going to try harder next year at school. He says, Mr. Holmes, I'm not going back next year to school. He says, Ask me quick, first, no money here make it in school sitting behind a desk. He says, I'm going to direct loans to patch wheels and give out petrol. He says, Money. You want to know something? And I'm saying this humbly this morning, I don't have one qualification to my name. And it wasn't the fault of the teachers. I didn't want to learn. I hated school. Cold at sweet cold. I felt more of a prisoner of war than I did as a pupil. But you see, the Lord uses and can use what's insignificant in the world's eyes. 
What did Paul say? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 27, God hath chosen the weak things of the world. Ah, the things that the world throws away. The Lord uses the weak things of the world to confound the things which are made. Do you know in our passage where we read from Luke's gospel, chapter 19, there we see in this passage such a scene. A wee coat is what the Lord used to be escorted down into Jerusalem. Do you know throughout the four Gospels, this is the only time where you'll find that the Lord Jesus rode any animal. Never recorded where he rode anything else apart from this story this morning. And do you know something, child of God? God wants us to see things in this cult. Yes, a cult. That's going to be a blessing for your life and a blessing for my life. The Lord can use a cult, you know, to touch all our lives. Do you know the first thing God wants us to see this morning? First of all, this was a sought cult. Take a look at verse 30 to see this. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 13, the Lord Jesus says, Go ye into the village over against you in the which you are entering. Ye shall find a colt tied, whereon yet never a man set loose him, and bring him hither. I want you to notice that this was a sought colt. And it wasn't just a sought colt, but this was a unique colt. It was unique. You know, this cult this morning, it wasn't an afterthought. This cult was not just something that the Lord Jesus thought of there and thought of then, not at all. But do you know, friend, there was something unique about this cult. This cult this morning, the Lord wasn't just going to use this cult to fulfill a purpose. God was go the Lord Jesus was going to use this cult to fulfill a prophecy. You know, this cult was in prophecy this morning. 487 years to be exact before Christ was even born. This very cult was in the plan of God to fulfill his purpose and escorting the Lord Jesus down into Jerusalem. 487 years before Christ was born, this cult was in the plan of God. In Zechariah 9 and 9 we read, Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, lonely and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, of the fall of an ass. And you know, child of God, in the eternal ages past, this cult was in the plan. And there was a day away out in the field somewhere. This donkey was given birth. And as she was giving birth, this wee foal appeared, a wee colt, at the right moment. And as this wee colt began to see the light of day, it was all in God's timing. It was all part of God's plan. The day this wee colt was born in a field behind a hedge, maybe, it wasn't just something that happened. God was in. Do you know something, child of God? You and I are not just something that happened. These boys on television that talk now and only tripe at times, that we're evolved and all the rest of it. I'm telling you, you and I, child of God, are on this planet and are on this earth for a purpose. 
You and I are on this planet this morning as part of God's plan to fulfill His purpose through our lives. Don't you be listening to Attenborough and these boys. Just you get to know your God, never mind what he, never mind you what Attenborough says. You get to know your God and what he says. And you and I this morning, child of God, are all part and parcel of God's plan to fulfill his purpose in our lives. Boys, I love this coat, you know. I was never as challenged as I was this week by looking at this wee coat, you know. Do you know something, child of God? I'm in Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle this morning because this was God's plan and purpose for me to fulfill His divine plan as far as this part of my life is concerned. Don't you think I'm here for chance? And listen, child of God, you don't have to be a pastor and you don't have to be a preacher to fulfill God's plan. Every one of us this morning, in the workplace, in the factory floor, up in the yard, in the farmyard, listen, child of God, you have a purpose to fulfill. I want you to notice it was a short coat. And the Lord knew exactly where to find it. The Lord didn't need a sat now. The Lord knew exactly where it was for it to be found. I'll tell you, didn't the Lord know where Moses was to be found? Moses was in the backside of the desert, wasn't he? Where God found him and called him to fulfill his purpose. My goodness, he knew where Gideon was when he was threshing wheat one day, when he appeared. And the Lord called him to fulfill some unique purpose in, in his life. Mary and Joseph, the Lord knew where they were, you know, when he had that plan to be fulfilled through their life for the Lord to come into this world. And listen, child of God, the Lord knows where you are. And if he has some special work for you to do, some unique work, let me tell you, friend, he knows where you are, child of God, he knows where you are. But this cult wasn't prophecy. But I want you to notice something else about this cult. It was tied, wasn't it? And I want to say this, child of God, as well. You're no use to the Lord if you're tied. The Lord says, loose him. He's no use to me being tied. And I wonder, child of God, does the Lord want you for something, but you're tied to something? Maybe, maybe the Lord wants to loosen you from your place of employment, as he had to do with me. Maybe the Lord has to loosen you from something, child of God. Maybe it's from Maybe it's from doubt this morning. Maybe it's low self-esteem this morning. You're tied by something that's not allowing the Lord to fulfill His purpose through your life. I want you to notice something else about this cult. It wasn't just a, it wasn't just a, a sought cult. Notice, secondly, it was a special cult whereon never, whereon yet never man sat. I want you to notice this wasn't just a, a sort coat. It was a special coat. What made this a special coat this morning? I'll tell you what made this a special coat. It was unspoiled by man. That's what made this cult a special cult. Whereon yet never man sat. Man never put his leg over his back. This cult was unspoiled by man. 
And you know, now this cult was never under man's authority, whereon yet never man sat. And I'll tell you this, God saw to it. God had his hand on this cult. And God of this cult set apart that man would never sit on it. And God set this cult apart that the only person, the first person to sit on this cult would be the Lord Jesus. Ah, the Lord saw to it this cult was set apart, you know. People can be set apart, you know. That's what being sanctified means. Set apart for God. Set apart for him. And this cult was set apart for sacred use. Whereon yet never man set. It's good to make a wee list of things that the Lord Jesus used that was unspoiled by man to him to fulfill his purpose. Do you remember in Luke's gospel, chapter 1, do you remember what Mary said to the angel? When the angel Gabriel came to her and said, But thou shalt be with child, and Mary turned round and said to the angel, Ah, but how shall this thing be, saying, I know not a man? The Lord Jesus, to make his way into this world, came through the, the womb of a woman, unspoiled by man. He made his entry into this world through a virgin's womb, unspoiled by man. How shall this thing be? Mary said, seeing I know not a man. And you remember the day in which Christ was crucified. And we are told on that occasion, that in the garden there was a new tomb wherein yet never man was laid. Friend, the very womb in from which he was born was unspoiled by man, and the very tomb in which he was laid was unspoiled by man. And as we look at this cult this morning, this cult, like Mary, Mary, you have been set apart by God, dear. Joseph, that tomb you have, it's been set apart for God. And as God saw to it that Mary wouldn't know Joseph, and as God saw that Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, as God saw to it that there'd never be a person buried in it, I'll tell you, God saw to it that nobody would cross this coat's back. It was set apart for sacred use. You know what this cult teaches me. When you're really set apart for God, you'll have no desire for the things of the world. There's boys in pulpits today and they tell you there's no harm in a drink. There's boys today and they tell you there's no harm in having a wee smoke. And I can tell you this, child of God, there is harm. And I know that this fellowship, and I said this Lord's Day last, last week, and I'm going to say it this morning, we are being blessed here as a fellowship with so many young people. And I believe they are young people set apart. I believe it with all my heart. And being used of God they are to fulfill God's purpose. And a wee word for the young people and a wee word for all of us. James 1 and 27, you hold on to that this morning. James 1 27. 
You say to me, George, what does James 1, 27 says? Keep thyself unspotted from the world. Young people, I can tell you something now. There's nothing in the world for you. And if you're set apart for, for God for a special purpose, listen, you keep yourself this morning unspotted from the world. Moses said, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Romans 12 and, 12, Romans 12 and 2, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of their mind. Take a good look at this cult this morning. It was a special cult. Whereon yet never man sat. It was an unspoiled cult this morning. And another wee lesson for you young people. Will you take this from me? I know you look upon me as an old fella, but I'm only a youngster at heart myself. Listen. Take this to heart this morning. Will you stay away from carnal Christians? For carnal Christians will spoil you more than maybe anybody else. You keep yourself unspotted from these people. Carnal Christians are Christians who believe they can run with a fox and hunt with a hunt with a fox and run with the hounds. Listen, we've got to make are mined up this morning. You can't run with the hounds and hunt with a fox this morning. Keep yourself from carnal Christians. The devil is using carnal Christians today to spoil young people. And they're using carnal pastors to spoil our young people too. There's more men in pulpits today and I believe the devil has them there more than God has them. You take a good look at the cult this morning. There's lessons in it for you. It was a sought cult. And maybe some of these days, young people, the Lord's going to come look in you. And don't you let yourself be spoiled this morning by the things of the world. And don't you let yourself be spoiled by some old carnal Christians. You take a good look at the cult this morning. It was a the special cult whereon yet never man sat. Oh, I'm telling you, this cult wasn't just an ordinary cult, you know. But I want you to take another good look at this cult. It wasn't just a sort cult, and it wasn't just a special cult. I'll tell you something now. It was a submissive cult. A submissive cult. Take a wee look at verse 35 where it says, And they brought him to Jesus. And they just brought the colt to the Lord Jesus, and it says there, And they cast their garments on the colt, and they set Jesus their own. And as he went. Do you know something, child of God, this morning? If you see a donkey and nobody has ever been on his back, don't you try and get on his back. The first thing you'll find the donkey will do, it'll throw its heels up in the air to do everything it can to throw you off. You remember it's the most stubbornest animal in this world. There's none more stubborn than, than a donkey. But here's a lovely picture I saw. Boys, you see some beautiful pictures. The moment the colt laid its eyes on Christ, the cult, I'm telling you. The moment it beheld him, do you know what happened? The creature recognized the creator. That's what happened. It knew who Jesus was. This is the one that created me. And the moment the Lord Jesus sat upon that colt, the colt came completely submissive to his authority and to his rule. Oh, you take a wee moment and go through your Bibles and you find animals that were submissive to the Lord. Do you mean the great fish that was prepared for Jonah? 
It says, And the Lord spoke unto the great fish, and it vomited out Jonah. The Lord only had to speak once, and the, I'll tell you, the great fish recognized its voice, you know, recognized the Lord's voice. Oh, there's many an animal in the Bible that was submissive. I'll tell you, even the very winds and the waves were submissive to his voice and authority. Do you remember what the disciples said? What manner of man is this that even the very winds and the waves obey him? I'm telling you something else about this coat. It was totally submissive. Every nerve, every muscle, every drop of blood, every sinew was given to uphold the Lord. I wonder, are you giving the Lord everything this morning to uphold Him? Do you know this colt recognized his ministry? The colt recognized the ministry the Lord had for it. And I'll tell you, the colt, the ministry of the colt, should be the ministry of every Christian. And it's not to throw the Lord off, it's to show the Lord off. This cult didn't throw the Lord off. It became submissive to show the Lord off. And child of God, that's your ministry, and that's my ministry, to show the Lord off this morning. Man, as this cult rode into Jerusalem, I'm telling you, the queen's royal horse never walked as well in the trooping of the color like this, like this cult. This colt walked, and its ministry was to uphold the Lord as he was passing by the crowd, the Lord of glory. And I wonder this morning, is that life of yours and this life of mine, are we upholding Christ this morning for the lost world to see him? Or are we throwing the Lord off and we're making no use of the ministry at all? Every Christian's life has a ministry of the cult this morning to show the Lord off, to uphold him, to show him off to a lost world. The Lord hath need of you this morning, brother. The Lord hath need of you this morning, sister. The Lord hath need of you this morning, young person, to be submissive to his rule. I'll tell you, there was no saddle needed in this coat. There was no reins put on it. This colt was submissive to the Lord's ruling, whatever that ruling was. Are you submissive to the Lord's ruling in your life? Maybe the Lord wants you to turn down and go down a road that you maybe think, that's not for me. You see, when you're submissive to the Lord's will, you'll go the way the Lord leads. And this colt this morning, as it upheld the Savior, it never missed its footing. But here I'm going to finish with the last point the Lord has given me. You marked the colt this morning. It wasn't just a short colt. And it wasn't just a special coat. And it wasn't just this morning a submissive coat. You mark this, it was a surrendered coat. Because I believe the unsung heroes of this passage are the owners of the coat. And you remember what we read in verse 33 there. And as they were loosing the coat, the owners thereof said unto him, Well, why loose ye the coat? The owners of the colt knew what was going on. The owners of the colt saw everything that was going on. Why loose ye the colt? And verse 34 said, And they said, The Lord hath need of him. 
There's many of us where it says, well, hold on. Sure, I need him. Oh, hold on a minute. Maybe the, the Lord look about somebody else's coat. I need the coat. Why is she the coat? The Lord hath need of him. Will you tell the Lord to take him and tell the Lord to keep him? He's his. He's his. Now, here's a, child, here's a challenge, child of God, that the Lord put me on this morning. What have you got that the Lord needs? What have you got this morning that the Lord hath need of, and you're failing to surrender it? You have something, child of God, the Lord needs. And maybe there's somebody in this tabernacle this morning I don't know, nor it's none of my business to know. And the Lord has pointed something out that you have in your life, and the Lord wants it. Well, the message the Lord has given to me to you is this. The Lord hath need of it. Are you willing to surrender it? That we loved who give his five loaves and two fishes. Look at the blessing come out of that because he surrendered it. And look at the blessing we're still receiving the day because of it. Oh, child of God, look at the blessing you're missing because you're failing to surrender that which the Lord hath need of thee. I don't know what it is. But here's a question for you, and it's a question for me, and it comes this morning from the owners of this coat. We surrendered our all for him. Are you willing to surrender your all for me? The Lord hath need of him. Are you scared? Or are you selfish and failing to give to the Lord what he needs? I sat down yesterday and I said to myself, there's more in that old coat, that coat, that there isn't many Christians. And what drove it home was this, there's more in that coat that there isn't me. Lord, seeking you this morning to fulfill some purpose in your life, or perhaps you have something the Lord hath need of and you're not giving it. Will you give it this morning? The Lord is no man's debtor. And you'll never understand the blessing that will be yours when you learn to surrender your all. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Our closing hymns, 581, please, in the red hymn book, 500 and...